Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our five questions series. For today's topic, I've chosen on animal husbandry. Uh, it's one of the uh, important topic as at least uh, two, three questions will, will be coming from this subject. So um, my name is Hansa Nora Sama and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture honors and I've also completed my master's in nematology in agriculture. Please don't forget to subscribe and please press the bell icon for further notifications. And if you like the video, please don't forget to press the thumbs up button as well as share with your friends. Okay, first and foremost, we need to understand what animal husbandry is. Okay, so animal husbandry is basically uh, it is a branch of agriculture which is concerned with animals that are raised for meat, fiber, milk, eggs, or other products okay it can be of wool for clothing etc right and it also includes the day-to-day -day care selective breeding raising of livestock animal husbandry they also deal with the study of various breeds of domesticated animals and their management for obtaining better products and services from them okay and there are four more important steps in animal husbandry they are breeding feeding weeding and heating okay these are the four important steps in animal husbandry uh what is livestock management okay so livestock management it is when it incorporates a study of proper utilization of economically important domestic animals it is known as livestock management so the difference might come from animal husbandry and livestock management all right Okay, let's go to our first question. Our first question, uh, it is on the breed of cattle. Okay, this is one of the important topic under animal husbandry. So, it's to listen carefully as we do this question together, right? Okay, so which breed of cattle, they serve as a dual purpose? The options are A, Haryana, B, Sindhi, C, Jersey, D, Kangayam, and E, Halikar. Right, so before going to the options let us know what a breed is okay so here in this if you can see i have given a definition of a breed a breed it denotes an established group of animals or birds which are having the similar generally body shape color structure and characters which produce offsprings with same characters all right so this is the meaning of a breed all right so basically, um, according to breed for cattle, we can divide them into indigenous as well as exotic, right? So under indigenous, it can be divided into three subclasses. The first one is milch, second is dual, and the third one is drought, right? And under exotic, it's only mostly milch, right? So let me just explain to you roughly what a milch is. A milch is a cattle which gives, uh, which are mostly raised or which gives a high yield of milk. Whereas, so as the name suggests, the dual, they give a, they give dual purpose of both milk and drought. It's a combination of both milch and drought. So before that, let me just explain to you what this drought is. Drought is nothing but animals or the cattle. They give a low yield of milk, but then they are mostly used for the physical purpose, like plowing of the fields or for tillage, mostly for the physical work. On, on the other hand, we have exotic and exotic it is milch, all right? So some of, I've jotted down some of the exotic breeds of cattle. Okay, the first one is Jersey. This is one of the most common one. I think all of you will be aware of it. And we have Holstein Frisian and we have Brown Swiss. We have Red Dane, we have Ayrshire. So usually uh, under this also we have different breeds, crossbreeds like Jersey crossbreeds, Holstein uh, crossbreeds as well okay so it's very really important to know the uh, uh characters of each of these breeds because questions can come from any uh, anywhere especially from not just from the cattle especially it can also come from the poultry from different types of breeds of pigs or goats or sheep as well okay we really have to know about each of these different breeds properly and try to remember their yield the milk 
ill production, their specific diagnostic characters or the specific features for which they are really famous for. These are the important things. Uh, try to uh, highlight all of them and try to remember all of their important features. Okay, so let's just go back to these indigenous cattle breeds. So for indigenous cattle breeds, we have milch, dual and trot under this i've given some of the different breeds which uh which is categorized under milch so the first one is cindy second is sahiwal the uh, third is gear and fourth is dioni so in dual we have haryana ongol tarpakar kankrej krishna valley for trot we have kangayam umblacheri amrit mahal halikar pulikulam Burger and Kilari. So these are the couple of breeds under these indigenous cattle. In the same way, uh, okay, so let's just go back to the question. The question says which breed of cattle serve as a dual purpose? As we have already seen in that uh, table, so the right answer for this is Haryana. All right. So in this way, try to make a table, to maybe take a screenshot of these so that you'll be able to know and keep as I'm speaking, keep on making notes at the same time. You might be able to revise it later on. And uh, let's try to solve all the problems to get all these questions together. OK, so in this in this slide, I've given just a brief for me, uh, just a brief description of how you should all study for each and every breed you don't have to go really in detail just remember the simple and straightforward points okay so i for here i've given like for three breeds uh that is for cattle so let's just go through one of uh, all of these together so for haryana it was originated originated from rotak hisar jinn and gurgaon okay and in the which is in the districts of haryana and it is also popular in punjab up and some parts of Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so basically the horns are small and the bullocks they are powerful work animals. Okay, and Haryana cows they are fair milkers, uh, which uh, fair milkers giving an average of about six hundred to eight hundred kilo of milk per lactation. Right, so this is very important. The yield is also important. Sometimes. Uh, for this, I haven't given the fat content for some uh, cattle breeds, which which gives exclusively high amount of yield. OK, and or plus uh, not just that they have a high percentage of fat in the milk for ongol, otherwise, which is also known as Nelori. Okay, OK, so remember the synonyms and the other names for all these breeds. And they are large muscular breed with a well developed hump. So, for example, this is a very important characteristic feature, right? And it is suitable for heavy draught work and it is white or light gray in color. The average milk yield is 1000 ki uh, kilos per lactation. In the same way, Tarpakar, it originated from the Tarpakar district, which is in Pakistan, of the undivided India, and it is also found in Rajasthan. It is also known as white Sindhi, gray Sindhi, and Thari, all right? And they are medium sized, compact, have light shaped horns. So this is an important characteristic so remember that body color is white uh, or light gray, all right? And the bullocks are quite suitable for plowing and casting. And the cows, they yield about 1,800 to 2,600 kilo of milk per lactation. So in this way, try to remember all the important features of all these uh, different uh, breeds of cattle. So oh, these are for cattle, even buffaloes also. Questions might come for uh, buffaloes as well. Right, so even in the same way, they, they have different breeds, uh, like the one of the famous ones are Mura, Surti, Jafra Badi. We have Badawari, and we have Tora. I've only given some of the breeds of buffalo. There are more. So, okay, so I have a question for you. Out of all these, which of this breed gifts has the highest fat content? So if you, if you know the answer, if you have any guesses, uh, please don't forget to drop by the comment section and uh, please let me know. Let's go to the next question. Uh, the next question is on the legal standards. All right, so what is the legal standard of SNF? in buffaloes snf is nothing but a total solids not fat okay and these can be defined as a nutrient portion which is present in milk which is other than milk fat 
and water okay it consists of a protein which is primarily cesium and lactobumin carbohydrates and minerals as well okay? right so for buffalo in the same way we have uh, for different domestic animals we have different legal standard of snf as well as the fat percent okay so for this question the the options are a 8.2 b 9.0 c 5.4 d 6 and e none of the above so the right answer for this is nine all right okay so in the next slide this slide i've given the classes of milk uh, the sources of the classes of milk and here the minimum milk fat per centimeter mm and here i've given the snf percent okay so for buffalo the minimum milk fat is five to six right and the snf is 9.0 for cows 3.2 and for snf for cows it is 3.2 and uh it's 8.3 for snf goat and sheep they make about 3.5 milk fat and the snf comes up till 9.0 chemical uh, camel milk uh, the minimum fat is about 2.0 and the uh, SNF for this camel is about 6.0. So in this way, the table, try to take a screenshot so that it'll be much more easier for you. Um, the questions might come either from this fat or from the fat section or the SNF section. This is a very important topic. So usually uh, a couple of times they've asked in the previous question paper. So just be ready with these type of question. All right. Okay, so the third one is gestation. What is the gestation period of a cow in days? Right, so the options are A, 283 to 285, B, 120 to 133, C, 290 to 295, D, 100 to 109, E, 142 to 145. All right. So there are important terms that you need to remember. And one of that, those terms is about gestation. Okay. Uh, in this slide, I've given some of the important terms that and terminology that you'll come across. The first and foremost thing to, uh, you, uh, you need to do when you study for all these is to learn the terms and be clear with your basics. Okay. And that way, uh, as you go by uh, studying the syllabus, it'll be much more easier for you all to understand and grasp it which will make your study more faster as well as more efficient the first and, so i've given few of the terms here so let's just go through uh, the first one is service okay the service is the process in which mature male that covers the male that is in the heat which with the object to deposit spermatozoa in the female genital tract and it's called the service all right so basically uh service is the mating of the cattle right okay conception the successful union of male and female gametes and implantation of zygote is known as conception right and here the gestation it is none other than but condition of a female when developing fetus is present in the uterus and the gestation period uh, the period from the date of service that is the actual conception or the, during the mating to the date of parturition is termed as parturition period or pregnancy period or the gestation period okay so the gestation period differs for each and every animals some of the examples are given here for cows it's 283 days for buffalo is 310 days sheep 148 to 152 days for goat 150 to 152 days okay so in this way for different animal species of animals it differs the gestation period differs right okay let's go on with the other uh, definitions okay parturition it is nothing but the act of giving birth to young one is called as parturition and lactation period the period of the parturition is in which the animal produces milk okay this is the lactation period is the time when they give the highest amount of milk dry period the period of the lactation in which the animal does not produce milk is known as the dry period so let's just go back to the question so the what is the gestation period of cow in days so the options were a 283 so this was the right answer okay 283 to 285 so i've given in this range because it can differ for a day or two all right 
Okay, so the fourth question is, where is the National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology, NIANP, located? The options are A, Delhi, B, Valor, C, Bangalore, D, Coimbatore, E, Indore. The right answer for this is Bangalore. Okay, so what is this uh, National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology? It was established on the 24th November 1995 at Bangalore, which is under the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. The institute is mandated to conduct basic and fundamental research with respect to animal feed resources management using f physiological nutrition approaches and to improve the animal productivity and profitability of livestock farmers. Okay, so in this way, uh, it's very important to know the timeline and the institutes and other research institutes which are related. So the dates, the year of establishment, their headquarters, and just have a rough idea of what they do. Okay, so this, uh, like, you don't have to go in detail with this uh, national institutes, but just remember, just mug up the headquarters and the uh, establishment date. So the last question here is on diseases Marek's disease is found in which of the following right so the options are horse b chicken c sheep d goat and e cow so the right answer for this is chicken right so this Marek disease is one of the most common diseases in the poultry world okay so it's very widespread all across the, uh, all across the world so this is uh, i've chosen this question because this is one of the most common diseases of a chicken so let's just understand what this marek disease is marek diseases it is nothing but a, it's caused by virus okay it's a virus uh, so it's highly contagious viral neoplastic diseases which is in chickens okay and it is named after the uh, after joseph marek okay so who was a hungarian veterinarian it is caused by an alpha herpes known as Marek's disease virus, which is also known as the MDV or Gallet Alpha Herpes Virus 2, which is GAHB2. Okay, and the signs or the symptoms would be labor breathing, lameness, it'll be very weak, and paralysis, paralysis can occur in the neck, uh, in the leg region, or in their wings. So in coordination, blindness, blindness, uh, the eyes will turn grayish, in color and the whole uh, chicken will look very pale and they'll have a pale scaly combs and have a greenish diarrhea as well and the uh, wood is not jotted down here in this picture they also have a uh, protruded or scaly skin as well so these are the signs and symptoms of this marex disease okay so in this way try to remember the important uh, diseases don't go really in depth with all of it but just remember that the names, the causal organism, why is it caused, and just the simple symptoms like this. Okay, so that it's more easier. And try to, as you study it, try to check out the pictures because the symptoms will be more imprinted in your head. So it'll be more easier for you to remember. Okay, so um, in this slide, I've given some of the uh, diseases of cattle, okay, and some poultry diseases as well. So for, uh, for, cattle we have a bacteria and the disease can be anthrax and tuberculosis okay and it may the symptoms a dry swelling on the body which will reduce the yield of the milk and for tuberculosis there'll be a dry husky cough and the lungs are also infected and virus they cause foot and mouth diseases which is the symptoms would be excessive salivation lameness and fever okay and they also cause another disease which is known as rinderpest. Uh, the symptoms are blood-stained, high fever, diarrhea, protozoans, trypanosiatmosis, and the symptoms are intermittent fever and death. Okay, so fungus, we have ringwork. So there'll be ringwork or like the ringworm types. So they have a rounded scabs on head and neck. Right. So the, for the poultry, we have 
okay so before uh, i forgot to tell you before this like the diseases of cattle or anything can be divided into non-infectious and infectious okay so usually infectious are caused by these cause uh, by these pathogens like bacteria fungi protozoa and fungus but for the non-infectious one non-infectious ones they're usually caused due to the poor diet or due to a lack of um, hygiene and um, a faulty feed etc so these are those are non-infectious but the infectious one are caused by the pathogen right so let's go back here to the poultry diseases. Rearing of poultry birds requires proper ventilated place and vaccination of newborn chicks. Okay, so some of the some of it can be caused by uh, parasitic, ex which is external lice, mites, tick, and fleas. Internal roundworms, tapeworms, and uh, hexametiasis, protozoans. Coccidiosis in chicken and leukocytozoonosis for bacteria, pylorum, typhoid, paratyphoid, flu, cholera, and viral is Ranicat disease. This is an important disease as well of poultry and fowl pox, infectious bronchitis, infectious bursitis, avian and cephalomyositis, Marex diseases, leukosis, chronic respiratory disease, hepatitis. Okay, and for fungal, we have aspergillosis and moniliasis. So these are some of the important diseases of poultry. So try to remember, like, at least the names or maybe with the initial, try to remember the names, okay? I couldn't cover all of the uh, important topics for animal husbandry, but in the same way, uh, try to remember the, the milk content as well. Uh, what's present in the milk and uh, the production technology for an increase of the productivity as well as don't forget to we have already covered with the livestock census so all the data of uh, the recent data are all available so uh, with that from there you'll get the raw data of all the production and productivity total wool production which breed has is the best for wool um, which one is the best for this for other purposes in, in that way try to remember the important important breeds okay try to differentiate right so um the deficiency as well the diseases as well and um the current scenario of um india in livestock production and livestock uh, and, and in animal husbandry okay and the reproductive cycle of all the domestic animals and composition of milk as i've already told you how the species wise like for example for the cows for buffalo for goat for sheep they have a different different compositions so of like water fat lactose protein so in that way try to differentiate at the specific gravity of milk okay so if you know the answer with the specific gravity of milk please don't forget to uh, comment in the comment section and so well that's all for today thank you so much and um, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and if you've liked the video don't forget to press the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends and do prepare well the exam is coming up um, so you'll have to keep on revising it and try to make notes and i hope you've enjoyed the session and we'll be meeting next time for another session